This once belonged to the late commander Makube before he was brutally murdered by Amuro Ray in the desert of the Texas colony. <laughs> Today, I'm going to show you how I made this very precious, priceless porcelain from the Song Dynasty. Let's begin. This program was made possible by viewers like you. So lately, I've been feeling a lack of class. I feel like a peasant, and I do not know why. Is it because I've been wearing t-shirts and sweatpants too much? So what we need to do is we need to up the level of class in our videos. I wonder how we can do it. Ah, you know what? I know what's missing. We just need a priceless vase from the Song Dynasty. That should do the trick. Honestly, the reason I made it is because I just think it's funny. I can't really explain it. I find Makuve's obsession with ancient vases quite hilarious. It's quite meme worthy. Apparently there are a few versions out there. There's a toothpick holder and also a soy sauce dispenser. They don't look that great. There was also an official version from years ago, but it's not available anymore. We're just gonna use those photos as reference. Get it close, but leave some room for interpretation. So the base itself is actually not that complex. First is to draw a section and then revolve it from a center axis. The software I'm using is called Rhinoceros. It's really precise. It's not really sculptural, but I just really enjoy using it. And as you can see here, how I made the, the pattern for the main vase is that make it on the side and the software automatically curve it and apply it to the curvature of the vase. The head is the most complex part. I thought I was gonna have to bring it to ZBrush, but I was able to make it in Rhino and it didn't take a lot of time and it looks really good. Here I'm applying the head to the main vase and I'm checking a section to make sure the water can flow through the spout and it looks like it does and it's looking really good so far. So added a Xeon symbol at the bottom because it looks really good and we're done with the 3D model. Here's a computer rendering of how it would look like in real life and we're gonna start 3D printing. First we'll print a prototype to make sure the 3D model works. It's in lower res and it took about 24 hours to print. The results are really good. So everything seems to be working. Clean off the support materials. The neck part does need a slight modification. There was a quick modification and now we're printing an actual model. What you're seeing in the middle is support material, which will be removed later. It will support the top of the vase which overhangs. This model is very high resolution, so it took 53 hours to print. The head of the dragon is coming along nicely. The result is almost perfect, not much cleaning needed. Remove the supports. Starting some basic cleanup. Everything looks good here. Printing the neck and the top which took another five hours. Some more basic sanding, and the neck part looks really good too. I was able to print it without support, so it looks very clean. Now we just want to make sure everything fit together. It's looking good so far, but what about the whole thing? Looks like the neck modification works. Now he snaps itself in. I was very excited at this point. Not much modification has to be done to print this vase. Here I apply a layer of waterproofing just to prevent it from leaking. And to glue the two parts together, I use two part epoxy. You can just cake it on and then wipe out the excess later because we want to make sure it's completely sealed. And the modification we made earlier really helped align the two parts together over here. And then we're gonna wipe the outside and let it sit for at least a day. That's perfect. Next step is priming. With bigger 3D prints like these, you will have to use a filler primer, which is unlike Gumpla. Since Gunpla has a lot of details and panel lines, you cannot use the thick primer like these. I'll put the ones I used in the description. And the filler primer essentially hide all the layer lines behind it with a single coat. It's pretty rough compared to building something smaller. Looking good so far. 
I'm gonna spray it upside down and let it dry for a few hours. And then I'm gonna spray the top part. And then I'm gonna let it dry another day. And here it is after priming. Everything is flat and smooth. And the Xeon logo at the bottom looks really good. Now I want to make sure it holds liquid. It actually holds a lot of water. It took a while to fill up. And I didn't realize it can do this. It's really awesome. And I spent a long time playing with that water. Alright, that's enough fun. So this is what it looks like to pour water or liquid out of the vase. And now it actually looks more like a decanter than a vase in my opinion. I'm just gonna call it a vase so it's easier for everyone. I'm gonna use it to water some plants. And some more plants just to make sure it's working. Done. For the white I also use a can to apply a thick layer to simulate the porcelain and to give it some imperfection. Again, I wouldn't use this for gunpla on something really detailed. It would just cake everything up and ruin the gunpla. The Tamiya spray cans works really well, but don't use the one I'm using. It's not for gunpla. Same thing, I'm gonna leave it upside down and dry for a few hours. And then apply a second coat to make sure it's nice and glossy. Same thing for the vase. And I let it dry another 24 hours so it's dry to the touch. And lastly, I apply Pledge. For those of you who haven't heard of Pledge, it's actually floor coating. You can actually use Pledge for your gunpla as well. Here I applied it using an airbrush and it actually smells great. I'll put it in the description. And to add a little bit more imperfection, apply a second coat with the paintbrush. I pretty much just pour the whole thing on the vase. And it worked. Let it cure for a few days. Don't forget the Xeon symbol at the bottom. I wanted to simulate the ancient Chinese porcelain, and a lot of them are white and blue. So this is pretty straightforward. I diluted a blue acrylic and just let it run into the gaps, wiping out the axis with water later. So from left to right, the blue is the prototype, black is the unpainted version, and of course the finished product on the right. Look how classy the living room is now. I really enjoy making weird things like these these days. There are a few other things I wanted to make, but feel free to let me know if there's anything you want to see. I had a lot of fun making this project. If you guys like this kind of stuff, give me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.